Okay, so we have the GQ4X um, ready to go. We'll launch, this is a Windows 7 laptop, and we'll launch the program here. Let's see if, hopefully, let me kill the lights there maybe. Can you see that okay? Hopefully, yeah, is it clear? I think so. Uh, there we go, that's better. Um, so hopefully this looks looks okay. So you can see that um, the chip location um, here, actually I haven't chose the chip here, so let's do that. Let's do device, device list. <clears throat> now here you can just type in anything, 27256 and we want the MBM 27256. So the device search is definitely much better. Oh gosh, the, it's kind of weird focusing on that, isn't it? The device search is definitely a lot better um, on these newer software programs. So we selected that, and if we come over here on the right side, you can click this little info button and I don't know if you guys are going to be able to read it, but it says, well, this is kind of interesting, right? It says um, VCC is 5 volts and VPP is 12.7. Right VCC is 5.5. So <clears throat> we knew that it was uh, 6 volts on the other one. And this is part of the issue that I have with the GQ4X is that basically every chip, they just leave it kind of default, like the right VC is... 5.5 volts um, and part of the reason is if I if I click on help let me see here if I can do this I might pause here and try to find the voltage okay I'll so hopefully I zoomed in a little bit and I went into the help file and these are the VCC voltages that the Q GQ4X uh, um, can leverage 3.6 volts, 5 volts, 5.5, 6.2. So that has low voltage support, at least a 3.6, um, and it has four different voltages, not as many as the other, uh, the EMPs or the ROM Max. And then it can go th for VPP 3.6, 12, 12.7, 15, 21, and 25. The big difference here is that you have. Tw um, 5.5 all the way to 6.2 so you can't do a 6 volt but you can do a 6.2 which usually is okay um, but the fact that it only is saying 5.5 is kind of part of the problem here so let me close this out and see if I can make this full screen now oh, that's that looks terrible <laughs> all right so um, hopefully you can see this okay so we're gonna go ahead and put our chip in And I'm sure this will program fine. It is, um, oh, actually, one thing before I do that. So I have my USB plugged in. And so you can actually test the hardware. And I recommend doing this because um, my, mine just are periodically test the voltage or before you start programming, especially without an external power supply. Something happened to my USB on this. So you can see that um, I'm getting lo low voltage on the US with just the USB port plugged in. So I do have a, a 9 volt plug that I'm going to plug in like this. And then we'll run that test again. And now all my voltages are, are passing. I don't know when that happened. It like uh, it just happened. I think um, when I was programming some stuff with a right VCC of 6.2 volts. I don't know if it was related or not, but um, it did just start happening. All right, so let's go ahead and put our chip in. We have our MBM 272256, and we want to. Um, blank check it right here now definitely a lot faster with the USB port than the EMP 20 and the EMP 30 so as far as speed goes that was definitely quick 
The other thing is, is over here on the speed function, I don't know what this does. I don't know if this changes the pulse width or, or what it, I don't know exactly what this does, but usually it defaults to plus two, which is speed one. And I'll link to a video where I actually um, show you how to modify this in the device text file, but you can't change all you see is what's loaded in the in the uh, configuration file, like how big the chip is, what kind of chip, um, what the voltage are, and this is hard coded in the device file. But you can modify it, but it is set up like that. Um, and so what we want to do is, well, if I read the chip, we will get a checksum over here, and that's the right checksum uh, uh, for this chip if it's blank. 7F88000. So that's the correct checksum. If we look at our buffer, so the interface is definitely a lot easier. Um, I think we can fill it somehow. How do I fill? Over here. I know this is kind of blurry, guys. Sorry. I don't have those. I'm not a professional YouTuber here. So we want to build fill buffer hex and we're going to fill it with all zeros and then we are going to and their checksum is zero 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 down here oops if you can see that it says that zero 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 and then we're going to write it now it does give us a chance to double write or single write and I don't, that means basically it writes the same um, address twice, I think. I don't know if it, what the other ones do as far as that goes. Maybe they also double write or there's not an option there. Um, and then we have write and verify. So we're going to take off double write and we're just going to hit write. So it's going definitely faster than what you know, the other, the EMP 20 and 30 were, but definitely not as fast as that ROM max with the ISA card. But there's definitely a lot of chip support for it, and it can program chips with 25 volts if needed. Um, this one, you know, doesn't need it. We only needed 12 I think it was supposed to be 12.5, but they're kind of being pretty liberal as far as what the voltages are. Um, because you you have a, a little bit of a range, so it can be plus or minus, like usually 0.25 volts um, in either direction anyway. So that, that chip is done, and we can do a verify... And it looks at and it devices verified. It says down here at the bottom. So I think that's all I wanted to show um, with this. You know, we have the you know detect hardware. We got the you know, voltage diagnostic. Um, see if there's anything else. You know, the device list searching for that is pretty easy. You can like search for just gals. I didn't know that this thing could program a gal, can it? Uh, maybe a certain kind, not the ones that we typically see, or at least as far as I know. SRAM, and you, there's no TTL support, so you can't like look at TTL chips, um, EE proms, and the, or you could just see it all. And it does have like 25. Let's see, 25 16s. TMS 2516, there it is. Um, 2716. Yeah, so and it has 2716. And this is what I'm getting at, why you, know, you don't necessarily need a high voltage programmer, because if you really need a 2716, first off, you could replace it with a different chip, or instead of programming a, a 2716, you could always get a 2716B chip, or usually the A chips, or let's see if they have 27C16s. 
Yeah, 27C16, you have to get still a B to get down the, usually some of the C versions, which is CMOS versus I think NMOS or something like that, um, will be lower voltage, but I guess not in this case. But anyway, there's always a chip that you can program, or you could just use a 25... Uh, 32 or 25, you know, 512 wind bond and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's ways to get around it by doubling up the image and, and replacing it that way. So, all right, let's do the TL866 real quick. <laughs> 